that leads us to our last subject where progress is really made on my channel, but sometimes y'all just tend to overlook this good stuff. If you're finding me and Larry for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. We're talking about stocks. One hot topic of debate this week has been the stimulus program and what a lot yeah. of senators and con congressional folks are trying to have in this stimulus is more bailout money for the airplay industry and how would that affect the stock me and larry are going to break it down after you see this clip by one of our favorite stations cnbc here's the thing that i don't understand i, I think we all want to keep people employed um and we all want to keep the airlines in the sky and the planes flying so that when the economy does recover, uh, it will help uh, make the recovery, uh, the recovery even better. What I don't understand is why the taxpayer should be subsidizing the shareholders of these airlines in any way whatsoever. It, it, it baffles my mind that I, as a taxpayer in America, should be subsidizing a shareholder of an airline. Can you, ex and, and, and a sp specifically a shareholder of an airline as opposed to a shareholder of a, a private restaurant or another company or what have you. Can you can you explain why that would be necessary? So let's be really clear. This is not propping up the shareholders. In fact, our program bans stock buybacks and dividends. And uh, this is a payroll pass through so that keeps people connected to their jobs. As long as we have for profit employer based health care in this country, you got to keep people in their jobs to keep them also connected to their health care. And the analysis on this is that it's a 100% return to the taxpayers because you have people who are continuing to pay into the system, who are continuing to contribute to the economy, and we keep service to all of our communities. So this is another piece that's really, really important Sarah, in terms get, of fighting so the virus Can you just hold right on for a second? You, you called it a pass-through. If the mm -hmm. money were not to come, the airlines would file for bankruptcy or would be forced to file, likely be filed, forced to file for bankruptcy or find private capital. If they didn't do those things... It wouldn't. I, that's what I, when you said it's a pass through. I don't. I don't understand. I understand yep. the idea of a pass through. That some of it's going to go to the. Some of it's going to go to the employees. But ultimately, the whole thing doesn't work, and therefore the shareholders get injured. Correct? No, actually, this is what we're doing. Is that this money is allocated just to go to payroll and to benefits. It can only be spent on that. It can't be spent on anything else. So this is really a jobs program to pe keep people in their jobs. And that's why it's a direct return to the taxpayers. So this keeps the airlines intact, keeps them from filing for bankruptcy. We've been through that before. And the public gets hurt with that. Consumers get hurt with that. The shareholders get hurt with that. That's what we don't want to avoid happening here. And this keeps the airlines intact, in place, able to serve all the communities that they were serving before. And you're telling that me that requirement but, but the, goes therefore away the shareholders are beneficiary of this. It, it, the idea that the shareholder is not a beneficiary of this is crazy. Because well, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the that, is that a bad be, thing, Andrew? Is it, that a bad thing? But the point is, well, no, no, the point it, of it, this program is to keep people thing. in their I jobs. I don't know if it's a bad thing. It's an unfair thing if we're deciding that we're, uh, we're, we're effectively going to advantage certain shareholders over other shareholders. Yes, that, that would actually be a bad thing. Do I want shareholders to lose their money? No, nobody wants that. But at a time when we're trying to figure out how to save people, look, I think a lot of people are happy to yeah. help people with unemployment insurance so that people can get by. The idea that I'm going to subsidize effectively a hedge fund manager who's decided to make a bet that the airlines are going to be rescued by the government, that, that's, not a, that's not something that most people are going to think is very fair. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, the guy sitting across from me, you might as well say he's a hedge fund manager because he's betting the house that the government <laughs> is going to save the airline. He's been telling y'all for the longest time, buy some airline for that reason. And my opposition to him is not that what he's saying is bad information. It's just that I don't agree with bailing them out. I'm not, I'm not yep. for this thing where the big businesses continue to get bailed out and we're struggling to get these a-holes in the Senate to give people $600 a week that lasts till January. I mean, my God, but you're about to bail out another, you're about to bail out another big company that's gotten too big to fail. That's what I'm not with. I'm with being linear. For as much as you give companies, same thing needs to be given to people, especially in their time of need. Don't be running around here talking about free market capitalism if you're going to always bail out big business. So that's where I part ways with Larry, because what he's saying is absolutely true. They're probably well, I'm not, not gonna... saying, I, I personally don't agree with bailing folks out. I no, no, I'm not saying, 
I'm not saying you're saying that. I'm saying right. you're smart to say that get the stock because the government is going to bail them out. That's oh, all definitely. I'm saying. They're you're gonna saying. Do the, they're going to do right. what they're going to do. So if they're going to do it, I'm not getting any bailouts. I'm not getting any PPE. When they when they start handing out free money, they're going to tell me I make too much to get anything. So I'm going to go ahead and make my money where I can. And if that happens to be buying up, you know, bottom, you know, bottom of the barrel, you know, stock prices on airlines and then just sitting on it for six months or a year, maybe even two years, and then it shoots back up. I mean, some of these airline stocks were, you know, 30, 50, 70, $100 a share. And if they're now trading for 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 30 bucks, why not? You know, well, snap them up while they're cheap and just sit on them. If, if you guys can afford to have the money just sitting there, go for it. The issue why I'm not buying them right now is because we're nowhere near a vaccine. And I don't want my money just sitting there that long. So when I when I hear that we've gotten somewhere close to someone has a vaccine, because ladies and gentlemen, let's keep this thing 100%. Even when they do have a good working vaccine, the economy is not going to just start working when they start taking the vaccine because you're going to go through people afraid to take it. You're going to go through the time period of getting everyone to take it. And then you've got to wait for the economy to start clicking probably another six months to a year after people get vaccinated. So all, and when it comes to buying the airline stock, I'm bearish on it because I don't want my money just sitting out waiting that long. Now, when we get a vaccine, that might be when I jump in because I know you're still going to have a year to wait then too. And so that's where I'm at with it. But Larry's saying, just get it now and act like it's a savings account. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna yield some serious dividends coming up. I think you're gonna end up. You're gonna pick up some cheap airline stock. You'll sit on it maybe for let's just say a year. Let's say mm -hmm. that. Let's say that in six months. It's August now. Let's say in six months in January that they actually have you know or, or in January excuse me six months. Let's say in February they have a vaccine. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to take several months for them to, to, to get those because we're talking about billions of doses around the world within mm -hmm. the within the country. We're talking about hundreds of millions of doses. So we're talking about hundreds of millions of doses within this country and billions globally. So it's going to take months to distribute all that. So we already know that there are people out there that you have people like Bill Gates with the Gates Foundation and that are out there building warehouses to do nothing else but manufacture, store, and then distribute from those vaccine doses. And so we know that they're going to be out there. They're going to be made. They're going to be. They're going to be distributed. And maybe that takes. Maybe that takes from February to June. Maybe it takes February to May. You know, I don't know. But if we if we're out there now, all of a sudden, if you start if you see the numbers start dropping, you get the vaccine, the numbers go down because people are vaccinated. Well, when it comes June, comes July, comes August, people are like, I have the travel bug, I'm gonna go somewhere. You know, the other countries say, Okay, it's safe for Americans to come back into our country, we're gonna open our borders back up. Guess what? Your ten dollar airline stock is all of a sudden is gonna jump up because what happens is it's going to skyrocket when all and everybody realizes the airlines are back in favor. The airline stock's going to skyrocket and you need to dump that crap and get up out of it because then it's going to level back out. And it may level like it may you may buy $10 stock and it may jump up to $40, $50 a share before it levels out around 30, 35. Mm -hmm. That's my yeah. that's just my that's my speculation. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm not telling you to go buy anything and do anything like that. That's just what I suspect is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So so I, I'm saying that if you don't want your money sitting on the sideline, wait until someone has an FDA approved vaccine and then jump in because a lot of stocks is going to start going up a little bit when you hear that a vaccine, FDA has approved a vaccine. Then they're going to go down a little bit because people are going to actually have to get the vaccine. Like Larry said, that's going to take some time. As you're talking about that's probably going to be a year before everyone that needs it has it or everyone that wants access to it has gotten it. And then you might start seeing the, those same stocks go back up and start staying in a certain place and leveling out. So for me, I'm going. I'm not going to put my cash into them till I hear someone is at the very last stage or is approved by the FDA for the vaccine. 
And that's when some of these leisure stocks, I'll be jumping back in, cruises, airlines, Here's, here's the problem with that, though. If you wait until there's a vaccine, the moment, the moment they say there's a vaccine, if they announce on the on the 9 o'clock news or the 11 o'clock news on, on Wednesday that there's a vaccine Thursday before the market even opens, all the big boys who are going to do all the after hours trading, all the pre-market trading, all the stuff that us retailers don't have access to, that stock price is going to open up. It may have closed the day before at $10. It's going to open up the next day at like $25.30. So your opportunity to get in at those bottom barrel prices is going to be gone. You need to get in and hold it for a little bit. And then when it starts to shoot up, that's when you can get it. So, yeah, you do need to put in money that you don't have, need to worry about, at, you know, tying up. So if you have, if you have, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars that you can put aside that you don't worry. Like if you just have money sitting in a savings account earning point zero three percent interest because it's in a savings account, throw it up in the stock market. You could lose some, but you could also make a fortune. You know, if you if you're willing to wait like two years, so it's not gonna I, take two years for the airline stocks. I'm I'm it's not, not willing to I don't wait. Think it's gonna that take long. two years for the airline stocks, and I don't think it's gonna take two years for the cruise stocks. I think the cruise stocks are gonna go up maybe within like six or eight months. I think depending on when it hits, like if it hits, if the vaccine is actually coming online in the summer, then you may have to wait until the next summer before the cruise ship stocks really pick up. But two I think years, the airline like stocks I said, are gonna go right away. He just reiterated my point. Two years, like I said, for no, all no, that. No, no. Just, all Just that one leisure for the, for the cruise ship. For the uh, airlines, no, I think they're no, going no, right no. away. No, 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 no. You, you guys can book it. <laughs> like right. bookings.com, you can book it. If you want to see the, the, the quadruple digit number return on those stocks, you're going to have to wait two years. Now, All right. Well, since, that's not, since that's not saying two years. That, yeah, go for it. Since you're talking about two years, here's one I think that you'll like. Is okay. Cushman and Wakefield? Who I've never even heard of them. Their ticker like, is CWK. They do property. Like, they they do commercial properties all over the world, and their stock right now is ten seventy nine. And I fully expect that you're going to have to sit on that for at least a good year, and then it's going right back up. Yeah, you two years, two years. 